Felsinger found the flush fastly. Voice finds the fall line. Pontero puts the pressure on. Meyer matches the momentum. Welcome back to the race cap. This is American Ski Racing Analysis from an American guy. As you can see, I have a new microphone. Today is November 27th. Uh, today was supposed to be a two World Cup day with the girls in Killington racing the GS and the men up in Lake Louise skiing downhill. We only got through nine athletes over in Killington. It looked like an absolute miserable day in Killington. One that I've experienced a lot of. I actually grew up 20 minutes from Killington. And when I was in high school, I used to get a free pass to Killington just for making the honor roll. So Killington holds a special place for me because they were willing to give a free season pass to a kid for making the honor roll. And I would just squeak by and get myself that honor roll in the first semester, got my free pass to Killington, and then I got two Bs the rest of the year, but it didn't matter, they didn't shut my pass off. So I really love Killington for that. It's a big mountain, sits out on its own, creates its own weather, it gets windy, it gets blustery, it looked like there was a little snow in the forecast with the wind that they had, just looked nasty. Um, the big winner out there today, Michaela Schifrin. She did not look great in that first run. Again, we only saw nine athletes, but she was already over a second out. The other girls looked pretty good in those conditions. Michaela's back looks to be in worse shape than they've let on. From what I'm seeing, she's really stiff. She's not able to move fluidly through her turns. And I think that it's a bigger issue than uh, they're saying it is. She did say that she's only got one day of GS training since Solden. Um, she kind of blamed that on not having the availability in copper. However, they were running Norium GSs in copper last weekend so there were plenty of spaces in copper to train good quality gs i just don't think she's ready with her physical situation so them canceling the race with uh petra sitting in the top three after the first run um and laura goo looking like she had some decent form maybe not her best first run but petra and goo had decent first runs. Michaela already over a second out, didn't look good out there. Um, today's big winner, Michaela Schifrin. Now, immediately after they canceled the race, I got messages from multiple friends of mine who were watching that race, and they all had the same thought I did. They canceled it to save Michaela. Michaela was out, she didn't look good, she looked hurt, so bam! Call the race off. Let's move on tomorrow. Great job, Killington Course Crew. Great job, officials. I hope that someone we know is out there kicking snow into the track, trying to make sure this thing got canceled in time, protecting our girl for the rest of the season. Today's show was brought to you by Course Reports. Do you want outside ski pressure like this? Because I can give it to you. I just put it in this rock and mail it to you. Don't worry, I'm legit. The reason these rocks work is because someone cared deeply about them. I use the ancient Black Hawk tradition of self-actualizing the outside ski pressure into the rock. Is it in? Yeah, I think it is. Just pull it out of the package and it's yours. Outside ski pressure rocks are $600. Each are made special order. Please contact JoeTheDad33 at gmail.com for ordering instructions. Moving on to Canada, the first downhill of the season was today up in Lake Louise. Lake Louise, maybe not my favorite downhill track to watch, but you know what? The guys were racing. It was good quality action, and let's get right into it. I'm not really sure in downhill how much I want to talk through all the racers. It's tough to go through them all. Today's winner, Matthias Meyer. He skied awesome. He looked really good, super solid. One thing I like about downhill is that you get to see some superpowers. You get to see some guys do some really special things. And one of those special things is Matthias Meyer's airtime. He is by far the best jumper in the world. The guy is smooth and clean in the air. There's one jump where they come out of a left footer and he actually popped it a little bit and was just smooth and calm in the air. 
and then landed over the little knuckle where you land and was just smooth and running through where some of the other guys, Steve Nyman being one of the real bad ones, who hit that thing and then would hit kind of almost like casing on a tabletop. Um, where Mathis Meyer just does, he just gives a little pop, a little float in the air and flies right over that kind of bad spot to land and lands in a smooth. He looked great out there. He was good all the way down. I think in the air, that gives him that comfort. It looked like the visibility wasn't great out there. So a lot of guys having trouble with their upper body because they didn't quite have the balance. Their skis would be in the snow and they'd be having good ski to snow contact. And you could just see it in their bodies that they weren't fully balanced and then fully connected to the snow. Matthias Meyer, fully connected to the snow. Second place today, Vincent Kretschmar, another Austrian. Vincent Kretschmar's superpower is his connection to the snow. And he's the only guy I've ever seen who can feather the skis, or almost stiv it, downhill and Super G skis. His body position and his leg strength is so superior. The guy is just unbelievable how solid he is all the way through. He's kind of got the combination of Zan Kranchek's GS technique with that super severe high edge angle hip angulation and Matthias Meyer's solidness and smoothness. So Vincent Kretschmar, probably my favorite downhill on the circuit. Second place today, really super solid skiing. Third place, another one of my favorites, probably my second favorite downhill on the circuit, Beth Foyce, the big fella. Now, the other superpowers out there are being gigantic. And Bad Voice and Dominic Paris are the two gigantic guys that still ski really light, really smooth, really supple on their feet. Both those guys, Voice and Paris, you look at them next to the other guys and they're a little maybe even chubby compared to the other guys, but they're phenomenal skiers and they have great touch for the snow. And Voice just has a, a clean outside ski for the most part. It wasn't his best day. You could see that he wasn't quite as strong to the outside ski as normal, but still good enough for third place. It's a great track for him. Being a big fella, he can get down it well. Uh, maybe the big winner of the day, Marco Odermott, fourth place. He had a almost ragged run. It was almost sloppy. He was wild. He was His upper body was kind of all over the place but he keeps the skis on the snow and he's willing to stand on it super hard. Again, getting as many G-forces as some of these bigger fellas that are just physically way bigger than him, but he's able to gain and utilize more G-forces than it seems like everyone else in the field. So Marco Ortema, fourth place today, um, really looks good for him in terms of chasing the overall title, being that he's already got a win, now he's got a fourth place in a downhill. And maybe the big loser today was Alexi Pontero. He raced the downhill today, trying to chase some extra points. He did not get any points. He was outside of the top 30. So Marco Odoma makes some big gains on Alexei Pontero today, who's unable to do anything for himself. Fifth place. In fifth place, we had Max Franz, uh, who had won the first training run, was fifth in the second run. Um, he looked really good out there. He was actually reeling in the leaders, getting faster and faster on his way down, and then he lost a ton of speed at the bottom, drifted back a little bit, but solid position for Max Franz. Good skiing out there. It's cool seeing that guy up on top. I feel like he's been there forever. I, and he's one of those guys I feel like I've been watching ski race for my entire life. Sixth place. Sixth place, Roman Bauman. I learned something new about Roman Bauman today. Now, he had been an Austrian who was a quality World Cup skier as an Austrian. And then a couple years ago, he switched over to the German national team. I always assumed it's because his mom was German or something like that, and he had dual citizenship. However, what they said today on the broadcast was that he married his girlfriend at the time, who was a German, and now he's got dual citizenship, citizenship so he's over there racing for the German team. At first, I was thinking, well, that's weird. I don't think you should be able to do that. But then I remember Sarah Schlepper is able to do that because she married a guy who's from Mexico, and I'm happy for her, so I'm happy for Roman Bauman. Uh, Bauman looked pretty good out there. He's a solid World Cup contender. You know, I, I think part of the reason he went to Germany is because he was stopped sliding off the back of the Austrian team. However, sixth place today says that Bauman is absolutely still a contender, a threat, a top 10 guy out there on the World Cup circuit. Roman Bauman, great job today. Seventh place. 
Seventh place, uh, Belay from France. He looked pretty good out there. I thought he looked great at the top. He looked really smooth. He looked comfortable. Where not all the guys look comfortable out there. You could just see the ballet was already comfortable all the way down. He didn't have any one section that was better than worse and better or worse than the rest. He kind of just lost time in little tiny increments all the way down. Great day for him. Seventh place. Congratulations. In eighth place, Dominic Paris. There's the other big fella. Dominic Paris is a beautiful skier to watch. He's not just a big fella that sends it hard. He really has a good pretty technique if you watch him especially in the super g's you can see his feet move away from his body they come in really nice his extension is beautiful and it always kind of looks like he's like way out in front of his skis because of the way he he gets his chest up and over but that's just him in the front of the boot he's awesome um psyched i like watching him he's probably my third favorite speed skier ninth place moving back to page two uh, Amak Kilde, ninth place today. Not quite clean enough on his outside ski today. You could see the ski kind of chattering. You could see that it wasn't smooth riding through every turn. Pretty good, though. I mean, he's coming off of an injury, so I think a ninth place result for him is good. However, if he's going to jump himself back into overall contention, he needs to be better than that in the speed events. But we'll see. Maybe that's not his goal up front. He'll work his way in slowly, running the speed events, and then add in GS later because he does need the third event to contend in the overall. Tenth place today, hometown boy, Ryan Cochran Siegel. Well, not hometown because they're in Canada. I guess just hometown because he grew up in Vermont. I grew up in Vermont. So Ryan Cochran Siegel of Vermonter, tenth place today. Uh, first race back from that big crash that he had in Kitzbühel. Um, first race on new equipment. He was on Rosigal. Now he's on head. He looks good on the equipment. He was actually ripping all the way down. He was 11 hundredths out on the second to last split and he was in there. And then he just lost a ton of time in the last two splits. He lost seven tenths in the last two splits. I don't know if he had one bad turn. I haven't gone back and really analyzed it to see what exactly happened to take him from 11 hundredths out all the way to seven tenths out. And, and oh, well, all the way to eight tenths out by the finish line. But it's good to see RCS with that kind of speed on the upper section where he's going to be a little bit better, better at turning, maybe, um, than on the bottom flat where he's got the big fellas to contend with. I mean, even Kretschmar and Meyer probably outweigh RCS by 30 pounds. Maybe less, maybe 20, maybe 15. I don't know, but they're certainly bigger than he is. But... Ryan Cochran Siegel looked good on the top. He's got the speed, was in contention to win this race until the bottom where he lost a lot. But still, 10th place, new equipment, first race back from a big crash and a big injury. RCS, great to see you out there. Let's move now through the Canadians and the Americans that were in the race. Obviously, we had RCS in 10th. Travis Ganong and Bryce Bennett, the two SWA boys, were tied for 26 today. I was hoping that with the new snow coming in, softer snow conditions, that the two squaw guys who are used to maybe skiing a little more softer conditions and have that California feel would do a little bit better. However, each guy just couldn't find the clean outside ski. They were on the outside ski, but you could see the ski chattering. You could see the leg wobbling a little bit. And each of them, you could see it up in their upper bodies where they were just twisting and using balance checks from the arms that are kind of uncharacteristic of those guys and really uncharacteristic of someone who wants to be in the top 10. So they scored points. Mm, look for more out of Bryce and Travis moving forward. Brody Seeger out of Canada, 31st, just missed out on points. Too bad for him. Steve Nyman, great to see Steve Nyman out there. I believe in Steven. I think he's going to come back. He did not look balanced. There was no inkling of balance in his skiing today it almost looked like he was having trouble seeing the snow in spots i mean his upper body and his arms were moving around and arm was going to back of him his just comfort level all the way through is not there yet hoping he gets it back i know he will steve nyman is totally awesome i will say one thing about steve nyman that helmet the contrast of the orange on the white suit and the white snow and everything was just like glaring and it did not show up well on camera it's a cool looking helmet in the close up, Steve, but 
on the course, it was almost distracting and almost looks like a glow ball on your head. Might need to go with another one. Sorry, dude. Um, after Steve Nyman, Eric Arvidson, a kid that I know well. I root for this kid a lot. A uh, former Middlebury uh, Panther. Panther? I think so. Middlebury uh, uh, College ski racer. Eric Arvidson, 37. Didn't quite have it, but he will. He is much better on the steeper, more technical tracks. Lake Louise is certainly not Eric's best hill, but he's still out there competing. 37th, he's going to reel him in little by little. Jeffrey Reed, 39th, Canadian. Cameron Alexander, 58th. Jared Goldberg was a DNF today. Goldberg, um, had his best season ever last year, could have another great season this year. He's just got to find more consistency. Now, where he went down, it looked like his skis were away from him. He absorbed a roll, put his skis back down, and then there was another roll, and he didn't see it. And he just went, Poof. skis went out, face went to the snow, and he really hit his head. I think he's okay. But it looked like he didn't see the roll, and he didn't have the ability to absorb press and move through it. So, tough one for Goldberg. It was a short run for Goldberg, but... He, you could just see it when he hit the ground and he, he punched the snow. He's got high expectations for this year, and I think he could be great. Goldberg, next race. Looking forward to watching you. James Crawford of Canada was 24th. Great result for James Crawford. Congratulations. Scoring points in a World Cup. Keep doing it. Sam Morris, another American, 41st today. And then Broderick Thompson of Canada and Benjamin Thompson were 49th and 54th, respectively. So that is the downhill from Lake Louise. Tomorrow we have the Super G from Lake Louise and the Lady Slum over in Canada or Killington. Hopefully Michaela has the physicality, has the kind of shape she needs in her back to be able to compete in slalom. Hopefully she hasn't lost the slalom as well as the GS. Um, but knowing Michaela and the way she doesn't like to lose and the way she doesn't like to ski poorly on the world stage, she's going to come back and she's going to give them all she's got tomorrow. Snow condition-wise, hopefully all that wind and just that horrible Killington weather just keeps seizing up that snow and drying it out, making it chalky and firm and just awesome for World Cup ski racing action. And then the... Uh, the the local killing tonight's can just suffer on Superstar for the rest of the season. Do we have anything else, Brett? No, I mean, it was decent. You're watching Lake Louise. It's flat, it's long, a little bit boring. I don't know, I'm not a speed skier. I just, I'm just talking about it. I'm, what do you want me to draw up here? A giant turn? Just one giant arc? What, what would I talk about? No, I don't have to do something up here every time. I wrote Michaela's the big winner. All right, that's a wrap. You think I rushed through it? Well, I got to go put my Christmas lights up. Amanda was very clear. This weekend, the lights go up. She's worried about Luke down the street having the best lights this year. No, I'm not competing with everybody, but she thinks I am. Well, I got to impress her. And then she likes me more. I'm going to put a Christmas tree on the front patio. I have the dangling icicles with the little flutter thing. And then I get the net things that go over the bush. I get the best bush in Blackhawk. 